Hey guys, welcome back to Don't Forget the Art. I hope you have had a great week. I cannot believe we are here on the week leading up to Easter, Holy Week, if you celebrate that. I am so excited. I cannot believe that March is almost over. Spring is here and so is Easter. And so to celebrate this amazing time of year, I thought it would be fun to do some spring art, um, Easter art at that. Um, and I think it's just amazing that Easter and spring, the start of spring, kind of come together the way that they do. I really think that it was, you know, all part of the plan because if you're looking around you and seeing the new life, um, you know, I know for us here, even in Florida, we're starting to see some of our songbirds coming back or at least coming back out, um, seeing them everywhere. The cute little bunnies um, actually scaring my dog when we go for a walk because they stay real still and then until she gets really close and she doesn't know that they're there and then they hop away and uh, the flowers popping out. It's just such an awesome time of year. And again, just that that echoing of um, fresh new life coming um, into the earth. And, you know, that's what Easter represents. So to me, it just totally makes sense that these two go hand in hand. So I have another challenge for you to try an Easter project. Um, if you could, please post your pictures um, of your finished products. I have some ideas here, but there are tons of them, and I'm sure you guys could probably come up with, with even more. So regardless of your age or your skill level, some of these are just so fun. And um, again, you can use them to kind of enhance your skills, whatever it is that you might be working on. So these outlines of the bunnies are great. Um, you can certainly tape something around it so that you know you get that per perfectly beautiful outline. But this is also another wonderful skill that you can use um, in this case with like watercolors. So if you wanted to work with watercolors and really explore that blending and blooming um, activity that they have, you can outline your bunny like this, okay? Um, and again, this is perfect for any age because watercolors, playing with watercolors is, is fun, again, no matter what your skill level. But if it's something that you really want to learn how to how it works, this is a perfect project where you get a finished product, but you get to play at the same time. So you outline the bunny, okay? And then you put water only on the inside of the bunny. Now you need to have your board, your paper on a flat surface and have your paper taped down just like we've talked about in the past, okay? And then um, uh, if you have the water only on the inside, then you can start picking up some of your colors and you know placing it so that you can get these beautiful blooms um, of colors. They'll start mixing in, but they will only stay where you've placed the water. OK, now you're going to need a good amount of water for this. So, you know, just an FYI, not don't soak it, but you're going to need more than just a little dib or dab. OK, um, this I thought was so cute. So, again, if you trace out the peeps or the bunny um, picture so that you can do three of them hanging with my peeps. Now, the lettering is a little tricky. So if you look at this and you're like, oh, that's such a simple painting. If you really want to work on your outlining skills, your ability to handle um, a paintbrush, I mean, you can certainly do this with, you know, an ink pen or something like that, the lettering. But if you really want to get a hold of using um, the paintbrush to work on the outlining, this is a great time to do that working on your dotting. Once it dries, you could certainly um, put some glue on the outside of this and um, put the sparklies, okay? But again, that's just another way to kind of outline the things. If you're gonna do the eyes like they did here, again, I would recommend you use the back side of the paintbrush, okay? Don't use this, because you're not gonna get a perfect um, circle here. But if you use a really, really fine tip on the back of a paintbrush, if you don't have a dotter, um, 
you can get those perfect circle dots, okay? These I thought were so cute. Oh my gosh, I love little bunny feet. They are so cute. Um, but, you know, you can do it on anything. If you've got some palette boards or things like that lying around the house, it's a great little little project. Um, we've been doing some home improvement projects around the house. So we've got tons of cardboard and stuff like that. You may just have to put some gesso down, but these are so cute with the little bunnies. Here's another one that you can use as like a multimedia so you can get the canvas, put your little bunnies in there, and then make pom-poms or buy some little pom-poms to put on the backs. Super cute for your little kids or if you have somebody who just wants to play around with you know, the things I would not recommend your regular silverware. Use some plasticware for this and you can make a little chick or something like that. If you want to play around with mason jars, maybe you're looking for something to decorate just for the springtime so it doesn't necessarily have to be for Easter. These little chicks here are cute and they can be functional because you can certainly put your you know utensils in them your pencils or whatever in them um, but just a great way to find some fun decorations around the house the little ones might have fun with this I also saw some cute ideas with some hands you know I love doing the hand things and I don't care how old they are I'll probably be doing this one with my oldest they um, painted the palm and the fingers you don't need the thumb but they kind of did the, you know, the, the live long and prosper kind of thing from Star Trek. So you get the bunny ears. You got to let that dry. So paint it white. Put the, you know, fingers separate. And then you can get your bunny face. Let that dry. And then you can paint in, um, you know, the colors behind the ears. And you can put your little things on. And again, this is something I do. My oldest one, he's about to turn 14 he just rolls his eyes but it's amazing when we pull out some of those projects you know later on he loves looking at all of them love looking at how much they've grown how tiny their hands used to be it is really cool so i would highly suggest you do this this would be awesome an awesome fun project for you know any age again um, it looks to me like they're using chalk. You could certainly try um, soft pastels or oil pastels. Oil pastels might be a little bit trickier. You might have to pull it, but it appears as though they're putting a good line of chalk, again, using the cardboard cutout for the bunny, and then smearing the, the um, chalk out, um, not in, out. Okay, so you keep this nice, crisp, um, um, outline of the bunny and then you know move it out now you could use any paper color in the back but using this um, black it looks like construction paper on the on the back side of it really helps those colors to pop almost gives it kind of a neon look to it um, this would be fun if you wanted to do like a recycling because everybody's gonna be you know coloring Easter eggs right um, so if you have some of those cardboard um, you know, the board ones, this, is, this will not really work all that well with um, the, uh, um, uh, the styrofoam ones. I mean, you can use the pink part of it, if you, you know, or whatever color. I think they've come in pink and green. I don't know if I've seen yellow or not, but um, if you wanted to paint it, you're going to have to use the board. If you use the other one, you won't be able to paint it, but you can still glue on the little um, chick mouth and things like that and, you know, these little mini eggs are happy to be one of my favorite little candies. So um, now if you wanted to look at it, you know, maybe you don't do the other part of Easter with the spring and bunnies and chicks and things like that. You want to keep it, um, uh, you know, more on the religious side. That is totally cool. There are so many things that you can do with that. And some of these, again, perfect for any age. Um, so if you've got this beautiful sunrise, and you could do this, they've got it on a stone. We don't have a lot of stones here in Florida, but if you have stones in the yard or, um, you know, outside, you could go buy some, this would be beautiful. You could use it as, um, a, uh, a paperweight or this awesome reminder of what Easter morning is, um, and I'll be honest with you, again, no matter the skill level, when you do these where you've got that sunrise or sunset in the morning, it's a great way to work with blending colors, okay, because you want those nice blends 
um, as they move forward. And then um, using this just a black silhouette um, for you know the shadow side of the image is absolutely perfect perfect for any age again like we talked about with your youngers um, or your your middles and your olders you really want to work on developing those skills those are the skills that are going to give you confidence to um, you know pursue art to do well um, and to give you that confidence by seeing a finished product that is breathtaking and this will do it okay again you can do this on canvas doesn't have to be a stone um, but work on the background first get that nice um, sunrise um, uh, uh, image and then you know put your shadow over it um, this I thought was absolutely spectacular definitely um, beautiful kind of abstract expressionistic um, feel for what Holy Week really is there's also this one here too that I love that has like all of the symbols here from Holy Week right tied into one this looks like it could be I, I my guess is it is oil pastels okay on a black construction paper again those colors are just going to pop they are absolutely stunning you could try this in a soft pastel or in a um, chalk um, that would be breathtaking too but remember those two are going to smear really easily so um, if you wanted to do something fun like this Palm Sunday, which was, you know, the, um, this Sunday, um, symbols here, um, the symbols from um, Holy Thursday, and then obviously um, Good Friday and Easter all tied into one. What a spectacular piece. This I thought was beautiful too. Again, very expressionistic, very um, abstract, but beautiful colors, beautiful blending. This looks like it could be anything my guess though in the background this may be watercolor um could be acrylic um you know you could use whatever it is that you have and again going back to the first one this you know beautiful sunrise idea with um the very simple foreground with the cross and the um, landscape um, in shadow it, again it helps you to create a stunning piece um and build that confidence of the skills and things like that. The blending here is just awesome. So have fun with it. Now, this is mine. This was the one that I put on um, in the intro. And I will tell you my story about this. So a few years ago, um, I painted this. And one of the things that we do in our house for Lent, we don't just give something up. We try to do something as well, kind of a daily thing to do. Um, so that it's not just all about, um, you know, the sacrifice and giving up although that's important in my opinion, it's also about doing and, you know, doing good and, and making good habits, um, not just giving up old bad ones. So one thing that at the time that I wanted to do was really dig into my art and start painting more. Um, that was pretty much when I was just solely painting with acrylics and things like that. Um, and so I made the promise for Lent to paint every single day, 40 days, 40 nights, 40 paintings. This one was my last one. So this is, um, you know, definitely a little bit more of an abstract. Some of them were. This was all done with a palette knife. And so you have the cross in the background and this beautiful um, Easter lily, if you can see it, um, in the foreground. Um, so it's still one of my favorite pieces, I think, because of what it symbolized. It was um, when I was just kind of starting back into painting again and giving myself that push of doing it every day for me at the time was really important. And here's what I would tell you, too. If you really want to do more art, if you really want to improve your skills, if you really want to bring art into your classroom or, you know, whatever, the biggest thing that I think, at least for me, is creating that habit. Um, um, doing this project that I did then was I think imperative to helping me to, you know, as an artist, it got me in the habit of doing the paintings every day and, um, it helped my skills too, because the more I did, the better I got. Okay. So the two go hand in hand. So if you're wanting to do something like that, you take the time now. I, you know, I know we're past Lent, but we're going into Easter season. And again, it's all about new life and new beginnings and, uh, 
this is a great time to make a decision to try something, you know, maybe take the whole month of April and, you know, do some art every day, even if it's just doodling in a, in a sketchbook or something like that. It would be a lot of fun, um, very relaxing, hopefully. And, uh, and yeah, hopefully you'll get something fun out of it. I cannot wait to see your Easter projects, whatever it is that you choose to do. Um, the biggest thing is I hope you enjoy it. I hope it makes some wonderful lasting memories and I hope you have a wonderful Easter. I cannot wait to see your pictures. You guys have a great week. Happy arting everyone.